Hey everyone, in this one we're going to talk about psychoneuroimmunology and major depressive disorder. And we're going to look at how major depressive disorder can impact the immune system. We're also going to take a look at how the immune system can impact um, a person's mental health to increase the risk for having major depressive disorder. So what is psychoneuroimmunology? Psychoneuroimmunology is a study of how psychiatric health impacts the immune system function. So this has all come about, this idea of how mental health can impact the immune system has come about in the last two decades. There's been three large meta-analyses that have shown that cellular and humoral immunity are dysfunctional in patients with major depression. One by Herbert and Cohen in 1993 and Zorilla et al. in 2001 both demonstrated decreased T-cell function and decreased natural killer cell activity in depressed patients. And the third one, uh, more recently, Dalati et al. Uh, in 2010 just demonstrated that interleukin, specifically interleukin-6, or IL-6, and tumor necrosis factor TNF were significantly increased in depressed patients. So it seems that studies that demonstrate immunological dysfunction in depressed patients is related to an aberrant stress signaling mechanism. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, why that is, why we see an, an aberrant stress signaling um, process occur in depressed patients. Before we get into that stress signaling mechanism, what is major depressive disorder and how do we diagnose it? And I just want to quickly go over how we make the diagnosis of major depressive disorder. We use the mnemonic M Siggy Caps, M Siggy Caps. And if you want more information on how to diagnose the etiology, the risk factors, and treatment of major depressive disorder, I suggest you check out my major depressive disorder video. So just quickly though, how do we diagnose MDD? We'll use MCG caps, and we need five or more of those MCG caps, and we must have at least an, the M and or I of MCG caps. So what is the M? The M is that there's a low mood, so mood is low. S is for sleep disturbances. I is for interest loss. G is for guilt or feelings of guilt or hopelessness. E is for energy low or feeling fatigued. C is for concentration difficulties. A is for appetite changes. P is for psychomotor retardation. And S is for suicidality. And to make the diagnosis of MDD, we need five or more of those, five or more of MCD caps with at least M and or I for at least two weeks. So if we haven't, we, if we don't have a, like a low mood and a loss of interest for at least two weeks, we can't even consider making the diagnosis of major depressive disorder. So we need five or more of the following with a depressed mood or low interest for at least two weeks to make the diagnosis of major depressive disorder. Brings us to back to psychoneuroimmunology. So what happens during psychoneuroimmunology or the idea that depression affects the immune system is that depression leads to a decreased thresh, a stress threshold, which leads to the patient to having more stress, increased stress, increased stress cytokines, which lead to alterations in immune cell functioning. This is the basic schematic of how depression might alter immune cell functioning. So the depression decreases their stress threshold. Things that normally wouldn't have made them stressed or bothered or anxious now do. So now they are stressed more often and um, they're stressed even um, more severely. And this heightened stress and long duration of stress will lead to immune cell functioning abnormalities. And the stress threshold and the resulting stress itself can be altered and um, can be impacted and changed by several different things in a person's life. Coping, method, coping methods, social supports, and gender can all alter the stress threshold and all alter the resulting stress. So why does this all happen? Why, how does increased stress lead to immunomodulation? 
So in the brain, if we have increased stress, we have an increase in CRF, or corticotropin releasing factor. This leads to an activation of the HPA axis. HPA axis um, leads to ACTH release from the anterior pituitary gland, leading to the adrenal gland releasing cortisol, so we get hypercortisolemia. And the hypercortisolemia over time and chronic periods of time generally can decrease T cell function and decrease natural killer cell activity. The increased CRF also activates the sympathetic nervous system, which releases norepinephrine. The CRF also activates microglial cells. The sympathetic nervous system and the norepinephrine that's also been activated also leads to microglial cell activation. The microglial cells then lead to activation of macrophages. The norepinephrine also helps in activation of these macrophages as well. And then with increased macrophage activation, we get increases in amino uh, cytokines. So these include tumor necrosis factor, IL-1, IL-2, and IL-6. So now that we see that depression leads to increase in prolonged stress, which leads to decreases in T cell and natural killer cell activity, and also increases in uh, tumor necrosis factor and interleukin 1, 2, and 6, does it, is it go in the opposite direction? Does changes in the immune system increase your risk for major depressive disorder? Well, in fact, there is some evidence that appears to indicate that changes in immunological functioning increase susceptibility to major depressive disorder. Quan and Banks in 2007 showed that approximately half, or about 45% of patients, administered interferon alpha develop symptoms of major depressive disorder. And these symptoms are reversed once treatment is stopped. So they give them an, an immunocytokine, interferon alpha, and then they show that these patients develop symptoms of major depressive disorder. And once they've actually removed the interferon, their symptoms of major depressive disorder actually are stopped. There's also been another report um, by Leonard and Mind in 2009 that showed that chronic increases in stress lead to increased concentrations of pro-inflammatory cytokines and glucocorticoids, which appear to contribute to some of the behavioral changes associated with depression. So it leads to defective serotonergic function, which may um, actually increase the risk of having depression in these patients. So, and how does this all occur? Well, it all has to do with tryptophan. Tryptophan is the amino acid that we ingest and we use to form 5-hydroxytryptamine or 5-HT or serotonin. So generally, tryptophan is metabolized to 5-hydroxytryptamine, but if we have increases in IL-1, IL-6, TNF, or increase in cortisol from heightened stress and heightened um, or changes in immunological functioning, these can activate two particular enzymes. IL-1, IL-6, and TNF can activate endolamine 2,3-dioxygenase, or IDO. Cortisol can activate the enzyme tryptophan dioxygenase, or TDO. And these two enzymes are actually metabolized are they, these two enzymes actually metabolize and degrade tryptophan to kinurinine. And then kinurinine can then be further metabolized, degraded into kinurinine metabolites. But what this means is that if these two enzymes are activated and they are actively degrading tryptophan, that means that tryptophan is being diverted away from 5-hydroxytryptamine production, which means that we have reduced levels of serotonin, which can lead to symptoms of major depressive disorder. So this is how immune system cytokines and cortisol can lead to reduced levels of serotonin. So what are some of the outcomes of um, major depressive disorder mediated immunomodulation? As we've shown before, it increases macrophage activity in cytokines, and it also decreases T cell function and natural killer cell activity. There are increased correlation association with autoimmune diseases. So there's patients with rheumatoid arthritis have been shown to be more likely to develop 
MDD than healthy controls, and, health, and MDD has been shown to exacerbate rheumatoid arthritis symptoms, but these could be more of a quality of life issue. Patients with rheumatoid arthritis could be experiencing pain, and they could be more likely to develop MDD due to their quality of life and not due to some underlying immunomodulatory mechanism. And with regards to decreased T cell function and natural killer cell activity, there's increased correlation association with infectious processes. There's been shown that depression is associated with infections with uh, herpes, simplex virus 1, and there's been uh, shown to have um, um, associations with varicella zoster virus, Epstein Barr virus, Chlamydia trachomatis. It's also dermatological infections can increase risk of MDD. So all of these have been associated with depression, but are these infectious disease processes um, mimic symptoms of MDD? So perhaps having Epstein-Barr or um, another viral infection, they might feel more fatigued, they might feel like they have no energy, no interest. So being sick in general might make them feel or might have symptoms of depression even though they're not depressed. And with some of the other dermatological infections, it might be more of a self-esteem issue. If there's changes in their appearance, they might um, be more likely to have um, or more likely to develop a major depressive disorder. So there's still much work to be done on this area, but it's definitely a fascinating area and a fascinating um, thing to think about. So anyways, guys, I hope you found this lesson interesting and um, helpful. Um, if you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.